Welcome to a bonus content episode of the Death Saving Bros podcast. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Paul Camper. With me today, I have Brad Richards. Eat dicks. Ben Renfro. Feeling dangerous today. Matt Smith. I'm just here to sack some cack. Brad Renfro. Ka-chow. And Eric Nemeth is not able to make it today, but... uh, We finally killed him in real life. You're not supposed to tell people about that, Matt. I mean, uh... He's with Revan now. <laughs> I'll make sure I'll just cut that out. But for those of us that are here, we've got a special episode for you today. Uh, we are going to be doing a a one-shot. I heard about this from a friend. Uh, you may have seen it on the bonus episodes of Critical Role. But for our players, they actually have no idea what we're doing today. So first things first, all you're going to need is a D6... And possibly a D8. Just one single hmm. D6? Yep, just one D6 each and possibly a D8. Okay, I got mine. So today, it's Honeycon. You are going to undertake the greatest heist the world has ever seen. You only need to know two things. One, you have a complex plan that requires precise timing. And number two, you're a goddamn bear. Oh, shit. Like, literally? Literally. You are all playing bears like for this plane? one shot. <laughs> like gay men that are large and hairy? <laughs> no. <laughs> like literal, physical, natural, animalistic bears. Can I be the bear from The Revenant? Can I be a koala bear? <laughs> Everybody, real quick, pick what type of bear you are. Well, actually, we're going to roll for that. I'll be black bear. Oh, it's part of the game. You want to be a black bear? Black bear, papa bear, the revenant bear, all the bears. All right. Well, let's go ahead and roll. Uh, roll your d6, and I will let you know which bear type you're going to be. I got a six. All right. Ben, you are playing the honey badger, which is not technically a bear, <laughs> but you can hang with them. Well, this is bullshit. <laughs> you are... Your skill is carnage. Definition? Honey badger don't give a shit. Can you use it in a sentence? After Ambionitis wields his war hammer and smashes people's skulls in, like, watermelons, the carnage that lies around is unspeakable. So, carnage means scattered brains. Gotcha. It means you fuck up a bunch of people's days. Means you're messy. <laughs> okay. All right, who's next? I rolled a two. You are a polar bear, and your skill is swimming. Swimming, all right. And drinking Coca-Cola. That too. Be rich what'd you roll? Six. You are also a honey badger. <laughs> you, lo- Your skill is carnage. The HB brothers. Sticking together <laughs> even when you're bears. Brad. So should I go with my metallic dice or my awesome electric pink dice? Your choice. What do you think, Matt? Electric pink. Okay, well, the electric pink dice rolled a six. (laughs) But here's the kicker. Here is the kicker. The metallic one, I kind of, I think I'm going to go with my metallic roll because that one was a two. So we got two polar bears and two honey badgers? (laughs) Yeah, buddy. Brother Bears, the movie. All right. Um, Sure. So, Brad, you can be a polar bear as well with the skill of swimming. And then we'll go ahead and use your six for your descriptor. You are an incompetent oh. swimming polar bear. Uh. Uh, everybody else roll one more time. Uh, actually, we're going to have to roll a couple times, but roll another D6. Matt, uh, you are the counterpart polar bear. What did you get? I got a two. You are a washed up swimming polar bear. Nice. Ben. I rolled a four. You are an unhinged honey badger. Definition. Insane. So a honey badger. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And be rich. Two. You are the washed up honey badger. You want to hear some real nonsense? I rolled with everybody else and I rolled a six. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, roll one more time with the D6. This will describe your role in the heist. So should I count that last roll as my six, or should I actually roll? Roll again. Oh, so now, okay. A three. All right. Brad, you are 
the incompetent swimming polar bear, and your role is the driver. Well, it's a good thing I'm bad at swimming. Matt. I got a six. You are the washed up swimming polar bear who is the face. All right. I got a three. You're also a driver. You're an unhinged uh, Mm. driving honey badger whose skill is carnage. You're my co-pilot. And be rich? Six. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, gosh. Do you want to be face or do you want to do something else? What's face? Face is like the, um, it'd be the talker, the guy that, um, that kind of does the disguises and is up front. You've also got muscle, brains, hacker, or thief. Well, I re-rolled a two. All right, you are the brains. You are the washed up honey badger who is the brains of the bunch. And if you would like to wear a hat, you can wear, you can roll a D8 and figure out what hat your bear Oh, hell yes. I might as well. A five. You're wearing a cowboy hat, Brad. Yes. A two. You're wearing a top hat. Nice. I rolled a one. You're wearing a trilby. Uh, definition? Think, um, Bruno Mars. I'll Google it real quick. Seven. You are wearing a crown. Okay. So, here's how this works. Um, you guys can name your bears if you want. Um, but... You are not a talking bear, per se. You can sort of mangle human speech through your bear mouth, maybe, but you operate on two stats. Each stat starts with three points. You have bear stat, which is used to maul stuff, uh, run and climb, shrug off damage, scare people, and generally do bear stuff. And your criminal stat, which is to do anything that is not directly related to being a bear. Anytime you do anything, if the action is ever in question, you'll roll a d6. So if you're trying to do something that's bear related, you'll use your bear stat. You're trying to get under your bear stat. So if you have, if you start with three, you want to roll a three or lower. If you succeed, you succeed in the action and you get one extra bear point. But then your criminal goes down by one. So you've got six total points and they shift between bear and criminal. If you ever get to six bear points, you're overcome by your bloodlust and you'll go on a rampage. If you ever get six points in criminal, you'll betray your group. If you ever think that, oh, I've got too much criminal or too much bear, you can do a couple things to voluntarily get rid of that. You can do a flashback scene in which you and the other bears are planning out the heist over coffee and cigarettes in the back room of a CD bar and move one point from bear to criminal. Or you can eat a load of honey and move one point from criminal to bear. Does that make sense? Yes. You say we start with three points in each? Yes. I'm sure it'll make more sense as we start playing. All right. Now. Do you guys have names for your bears? We fuzz butt. I will be Harry. Is it Harry sp- Barry? Is it spelled? <laughs> is it spelled H A R R Y? Yes. If I had a pet polar bear, what would I name it? Is all I'm trying to think of here. Honey badger is fine. I'll just be PB for short. All right. It'll leave the enigma of whether or not we're referring to peanut butter, or perhaps blue ribbon. Okay. Yeah. So, like I said, you are bears trying to pull off the perfect heist with the most complex plan the world has ever seen that requires precise timing, but you are bears. What you are trying to steal, besides honey from Honeycon, is a briefcase of pure Manuka extract worth five million dollars. The convention is being organized by a spoilt trust fund kid at a lavish fishing village. It is your job to get into the town, find the honey, and steal the briefcase. Roll and just start mauling everybody. (laughs) Um, They'll run and they'll leave the briefcase behind. Do we have like tickets to this convention or admission passes? 
Sure, you managed to get your hands on some tickets. Our paws? Yes, your paws on some tickets. Aha! Are we just starting off in there? Yeah, you or... are starting off outside the fishing village in the raspberry wood. Ooh. And you're looking out over the fishing village. So I guess if it's a fishing village, my first uh, assumption would be that the air is very thick with the smell of fish. But I would like to maybe try to enter into my bear zone here, my bear state of mind, and see if I can just smell the honey in the wind. Is that how this works? Well, I don't think it. it's actually a very nice breezy day, and you can smell the salt coming off the sea. And yes, there is that wonderful scent of fish that is being pulled up by the fishing boats. And Hello, on top of that, ladies. And on top of that, the slight lace of honey. But you couldn't pinpoint exactly where the honey is because, of course, it is the honey convention. And all the honey connoisseurs are in town. So is there like a specific type of honey we're looking for? You are looking specifically for that briefcase of pure Manuka extract. Okay, do I know anything about that? Pure Manuka? Like, what it looks like, <laughs> what it smells like, what it tastes like. like. Um, you have never had Manuka extract, but you know that it is delightful. You do know that the briefcase is uh, fine leather that is stitched all up and down the sides so that it is perfectly encasing the scent of the honey and it perfectly preserves that delectable taste you so much crave. Do we know what... You said there was like a kid with the briefcase? Um, you know that the organizer of the, pl- of the convention is a spoilt tr- trust fund kid. Would he have the Do... briefcase? But he knows where it is. Hmm, we maul him. Where is his house? Let's go to his house. <laughs> Do we know anything about this kid, what he looks like? Does he have a swimming right. pool? Anything like that? Yes, you know that his name is Humphrey, and Humphrey is a little fat fuck. (laughs) No, he's... Humphrey is a little fat kid. He has... Little fat piece of shit, you little string bean. (laughs) I say that all the time now at work. (laughs) I introduce my coworkers to it. Yes. Um, But yes, Humphrey has curly orange hair. And he's always got, like, a little bit of honey left over on his lips. And he wears shirts that are too tight for him. So you can always see a little bit of his belly button. Wait, are all these people we're also dealing with bears? No. Or are they actual people? They're people. You're bears. So are... when bears just kind of walk up in this convention, are people going to freak out because there's just four bears that just strolled in? Not unless you're cunning, which the four of you are. Sure. All right. I'm a driver. Um, what is my vehicle, or do I get to choose? Yeah, sure. You have a vehicle. What's your vehicle? A tandem bicycle. <laughs> Does it have four <laughs> seats on it, though? Yep, it has enough for everyone. Okay. <laughs> Wait a second. So if I'm also the driver, which one of us gets the first seat? I get the first seat. We can do like a uh, golden compass type thing where... We each get a honey badger on top of us. You drive yourself, and then I guess... The honey badger's the rider? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not understanding your reference. You know, the golden compass with the polar bears with the the armor and the the saddle on them. Oh. Well, there's some polar bears with an armor and a saddle on them. I'm not allowing (laughs) either of those two to ride me. Well, I I I'm going to stick with my tandem bicycle. has four seats. If anybody wants to ride on it, they're welcome. But if they choose not to, that's also fine. That is what I will be driving. I guess I'll hop on the tandem bicycle. In style. I'm going to drive my own bicycle. And it's red. Is yours just a regular bicycle? No, it's also a four-person tandem bicycle. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Mine's got one of those little squeaky horns on the front. Mine's got those pegs that are attached to the um, wheels so that... They clank and clank as it spins. Like a trick bike or like no. like you put the card in the spokes and it just... Yeah, basically. I put a little <laughs> card in the spokes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I got the reflectors on mine as well, as well as those like little tiny rear view mirrors. I got a badass biker jacket. 
my seats don't actually have seats on them. They're all just poles <laughs> that we sit on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the two, uh, the two people, the two bears. So PB and Harry Barry, go ahead and roll. Crim- go ahead and roll trying to get criminal so that you can operate these bicycles. I rolled a two. I, I rolled a three. All right, both of you succeed. So you now move one stat from your bears to your criminal. So you now have four bear and two criminal. Or no, sorry, four criminal and two bear. I got it. And you ride into the fishing village in style. Um, Are we wearing disguises? You're wearing your, your hats. Ah, I'll never be able to tell my bear as long as I'm wearing my cowboy hat. And I can make my very best bear impression to say, Yeehaw. <laughs> okay. So you guys ride into town in style. And, uh, Harry Barry, you're squeaking your horn. And people notice you coming in. And, uh, PB, you're on your own and you're. You got those spokes going, and you're really trying hard, though. You really got to pedal that thing to, because you're supposed to have three other people on it, <laughs> or three other bears on it. It's uh, a lighter load. You come in to a stop, and you stop in front of a, in front of a building with a large porch, and there's somebody rocking in a rocking chair, and he's got a pipe, like a big long Gandalf pipe, and he's got a pepper and salt beard to match he goes them some pretty fancy bikes you got there where'd you find them i attack him (laughs) (laughs) that's what a a honey badger would do right (laughs) who doesn't give a fuck about anything (laughs) (laughs) okay um yeah give me give me a bear roll where's the honey that's a three so that's a failure you jump up into his lap and he says well, you know, I I I was just trying to be friendly, but I wasn't trying to be that friendly. Can you smell any honey on him? So do I do I transfer any points or lose anything by doing that or Nope. Okay. I want to Is there like dirt on the ground or is it like Oh, actually, it's the other way around. Okay, so actually when you fail, that's when you move one from bear to criminal or from criminal to bear. So um Actually, Brad, your Harry or PB is still the same. Harry Barry, now you would have succeeded at your bear check. So, yes, you can maul this guy because you still would have been three and three. So, my points are still three and three now, then? Yes. So, you succeed at mauling this guy. And I maul the shit out of this dude? (laughs) Yes. He says, I'm sorry, I was just trying to ask a question. Uh, I guess I I guess I don't talk because I'm a bear. Well, I just do it. You're not a talking bear per se, but you can sort of mangle human speech through your bear mouth, maybe. I just don't even say anything. I just do it. Alright, and then well, uh, you said it was on his porch. I'd like to go into his house and try to raid it to see if I can find any honey. Okay. (laughs) You go inside, and uh, sure enough, it's Honeycon, so he's got some honey right out on the kitchen counter. Big old Winnie the Pooh pot that says (laughs) honey. Fool. All right, I I eat some honey. Okay, you eat the whole thing, and you can move one point from criminal to bear. Uh, uh, do I have to, or is it like an optional thing? That's an optional thing. Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Are we still just like chilling on this guy's porch? Unless you guys are doing something else. <laughs> is there some dirt nearby? Yes. I want to wave the guy over, and I want to scratch with a single bear claw an image of... The fuck was this... Fat fuck's name? Humphrey. Humphrey. I want to draw Humphrey in the dirt. <laughs> then I want to take off my top hat and hold it and look sad. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, give me a criminal roll. Don't we have invitations with like an address Shit. on them? <laughs> you, you have tickets to get into the city. Oh. I rolled a five. Oh, that's a failure. <laughs> so you move one criminal to your bear and the... Man that just got mauled by Harry Barry doesn't have time to stop and talk to you. I guess that that makes sense. He runs away. But somebody else comes by and points at it and goes, Hey, that looks just like 
Humphrey. That looks just like the fat kid that hu- that hired this entire thing. Did you want to try again? <laughs> sure. Bro. I want to look at it and like look around like I'm sad and lost looking for him. Okay. In that case, um, because they pointed it out in the first place, they say, Oh, you looking for Humphrey? Yeah, Humphrey is over, uh, over down by the docks. He's got his big yacht, and he's um, he's unloading all the honey for the honey games later. I want to speak and word. bear speak to the rest of the group. Let's go fucking kill him. I hear the word honey. My ears perk up. I come sprinting out of the house, get up right in this dude's face, and I would like to stand up on two feet, towering over him, and let out a big roar. Remember, you're a honey badger, so you come up to his knees. <laughs> Well, I would like to do it and try to be as intimidating as possible. <laughs> and do what? Maul him afterwards, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so should I just, like, pick him up by his tail and, like, set him on his bike since I'm a polar bear and he's a little honey badger? <laughs> I don't know. Are you doing that? Yeah, I say we're all going to get moving to this party. So I'm just going to try to pick him up and just put him back on his bike. I'd like to maul this polar bear. <laughs> sure, you can go after the, after the polar bear. Roll for initiative. Do I, do I just roll? No, you, you just do it. <laughs> uh, it okay. tickles. Is he dead now? No. <laughs> Out of this game, KO. I got a bit of a size advantage on you, bud. <sighs> just don't get me anywhere near water. I'm not very good at swimming, even though I'm a swimmer. Hop on hop on my uh, bike real quick. We'll go on a little ride. And I'll drive us straight into the water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gonna... I guess I hop back on my bike, and I want to start... Pedaling in the direction of the docks. Honey Badger, name and title. Are you headed? Are you going with Harry Berry as well? Sure. Alrighty. Is it? Is anybody else getting on that tandem bike? Or I'll, I'll tag along. Got my own bike. Okay, you guys continue through the town and you get down to the docks. Out on the docks, everybody's gathered around to watch as these big burly men are carrying giants. Winnie the Pooh honey pots off of this giant yacht and at the bow of the boat you see a little fat kid with a little bit of tummy showing with his hands stuck in the pot and a little bit of honey glistening around his lips and his bright orange curls glowing in the sunlight and he goes make sure you don't tip any of those honey pots it's the honey convention and we have to make sure that the Manuka extract is ready for the games. I say we ride by, and as we're riding by on our bike, we just snatch him up and we pedal away. We do. Well, he's on the bow of the boat up. Oh, he's on the he's on the boat. Okay. Yeah. We would like to ride up the ramp onto the boat, come by him real quick, and sit him on the last seat of our bicycle and go off into the sunset. All right, well, you start uh, riding down the docks. Well, I actually feel like it would I hit the be... Brakes. He said it's on the boat or being delivered off of the boat, so what if we just snuck on the boat to look for it? I pedal over to the nearest bike rack, and I would like to park the bicycle, put the kickstand up, and take out my chain lock and manage to lock my bicycle so nobody steals it. All right, give me a criminal <laughs> roll. That's a five. That's a failure. So, I move my dice now, or only on succeeds? On failures, you move one point from criminal to bear. Okay. How many bear points you up to? Five. <laughs> if you get to six, you go on a rampage, and the campaign's over. Oh, the campaign's over if that happens? Yeah. <laughs> oh, quick a night. That's fine. I'm not going to do anything about it yet. <laughs> okay. Um, you try to lock the lock, and eventually you just give up it doesn't your bear paws don't fit through the spokes you can't handle the chain and especially not closing that lock i become visibly sad and upset and frustrated but then i just leave it i walk up to him and i say hey it's okay it's just like that one time we were planning this whole heist and i'd try to draw him into a little flashback here okay so we both take a point over to the criminal side all right, what happens in this flashback? Oh, uh, well, I, mm, I didn't know yet. You're the one telling the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're the one trying to draw me into something I'm not trying to be a part of. <laughs> we were all there, you know, at the, the big table by the fireplace. 
at the gentleman's club. Uh, the fireplace with the bear rug in front of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was a tiger, I believe. Ah, the polar bear rug. So soft on my paws. Nice and warm by the fire. I can roll my whole body up into it. That's good enough for a flashback. You can take one point back into your... Out of bear into criminal if you want. I choose not to. Ooh, living dangerous. <laughs> Just gonna start feeding I told you, you a bunch I woke of up honey. feeling dangerous today. <laughs> All right. So Humphrey is up on the top of the boat and he puts his hand back in the honey pot and then goes, I'm out of honey. I think I. you better get these games started soon or I'm going to go after the Manuka extract myself. All you peasant folk, you don't deserve it. All right. Bear assembly right now. So, we can stall the games. That's so eventually he goes after it himself. Follow him. Maul him. Steal the, steal the extract ourselves. Or, we can maul him right now. Force him to show us where the Manuka honey is. Maul him again. Eat the Manuka honey. And then maul him for a third time. And then drive the boat into the sunset. Is that essentially our goal here? The reason we want the honey isn't because it's worth a lot. It's just because it tastes good and we're bears and want to eat it. A little column A, a little <laughs> column B. Yes. And also this kid needs to get mauled. Okay. Um, wow. So you're telling me if I try to do something bear-related and fail, then I lose the game for everyone? Yeah. And he has to roll a one? No, he has, he has to, to roll, roll five. five or lower. I like those odds. Five or lower to do what? Wait, if he does something bear and fails, doesn't a point go from bear oh, to that's, criminal? Yeah, that's right. So yeah, if you try to do something criminal and you fail, it'll go from criminal to bear. And then you'll lose the game. And he has to roll Well, I guess his criminal points or lower to pass? Yes, so right now his criminal points are one, so he would have to roll a one. <laughs> and I guess you wouldn't lose, you would just go on a bear rampage <laughs> and get the honey by whatever means necessary. So essentially right now, do not try to do any criminal things, all bear things is what I'm going for. Or you could take that flashback. Well, I would do what any bear would do, and do I see any nearby trees? Yes, there is a tree right next to the bike rack. It's a nice shady area. Well... Is there a bee's nest up there full of honey? Yes. I scurry my bare ass up this tree. Bare ass, like, it's naked. Like, my bare ass. Um, Your bare, bare up ass? Up the tree, and I would like to get the honey out of this, out of this nest and eat it. All right. <laughs> Roll a bear As check. a bear would do. That is a three. You successfully get the honey from the bees without getting yourself too stung. And, yeah, I mean, if you eat a load of honey, you could also move one point voluntarily <laughs> from your criminal to your bear. Oh, so I could right now voluntarily go on a rampage. Yes. Nice. I feel I choose not to, however. Well, that's nice of you. I feel like it'd be more of a game if it wasn't a choice. <laughs> like, it has to move because you did the action. Rules are you can voluntarily move one point of criminal into bear by eating a load of honey. Yeah, I didn't know if that meant like you voluntarily eat the honey to move the point. It's like taking a potion to get the HP type deal. Yeah, but I mean, if you want to go on a rampage, you want to go on a rampage. <laughs> no, we're not. I'm not going to rampage myself just yet. President's Day, everyone. Might be a lackluster holiday, but it's the one we've got right now. So, here are your holiday announcements. This week's podcast partner is The Retroverse. The Lasers and Liches Retroverse is a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons compatible setting with new classes, creatures, and magic that evoke your favorite 80s and 90s nostalgia. A Kickstarter is currently underway for full access to the in-production game and the chance to get credit as a playtester. The campaign is over 400% funded, with 22 days still to go as of February 20th, 2019. So go check it out and join in on the support for our good friends and their great content. 
That's the Lasers and Liches Retroverse. If you're interested in becoming a podcast partner, send an email with a quick synopsis of your project and a 30-second promo, if you have one, to deathsavingbros at gmail.com. We'll review your pitch and get back to you. If this is your first episode, we recommend going back to episode 25 to catch up on our current arc. Or, if you like what you're hearing, go all the way back to episode 1 to hear all the Death Saving Bros shenanigans. And make sure to tell a friend once you've heard a little bit. Your recommendations are the quickest way to grow the podcast. And that includes leaving a rating, leaving a review on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or Stitcher. Uh, Sometimes I forget to pull the new ones. I apologize. I forget to pull the new ones to read on the podcast, as I always promise. But even if it takes a couple extra weeks... I will pull your review, and we will read it on the air. And while you're waiting to hear your sweet, sweet review, help spread the word by repping the Death Saving Bros brand with official swag from Redbubble.com. The Death Saving Bros logo design is currently available on shirts, hoodies, mugs, and notebooks, with new designs coming soon. You can find that gear by searching Death Saving Bros on Redbubble.com. Then go follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Death Saving Bros for the latest news, and follow Life Saving Bros on Instagram to bring to life your own D&D campaign with plot hooks, pre-made character sheets, and other tips and tricks. Ben's doing a great job leading that, and he's come up with a bunch of good hooks. Honestly, I kind of want to pull one out and see how the guys fare with it. Other than that, how do you think the boys are handling this one-shot? Are you enjoying it? It was weird not having Eric for this one, and Beerich was a little under the weather, but I still had a ton of fun making it. Maybe it's something about being cuddly bears, but how can you not have fun when you're a bear? Let us know via the many channels I rattled off if you want more one-shots like this, more off-brand content, and while you get to tweeting, I'll get you back to the episode. Without further ado, we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. So Humphrey, uh, Humphrey leaves the bow of the boat and tosses away his empty pot and says, Guards, get me another pot. Is there any more honey from the bee's nest that we can bring over to him as a kind gesture? No. Harry Berry ate it all. I'm up there licking my, licking my paws and stuff. How far is Humphrey from us? By water, it's 50 feet by dock. Um... You'd have to go along the dock to get on the boat, and that's about 80 feet. I'd say we just swim. If we swam over there, could we like climb onto the boat, or is it like a huge ass, like, I don't know, cruise liner? How, how bare are you? Oh, I'm super bare. I say we swim <laughs> for it. I'm a swimmer, just like you. Yeah, swimming, <laughs> climbing, doing bare things is, uh, Bear check. All right, attack formation. Let's do this. So what, are you guys just like going over to the ledge, like where the water's at, and just getting ready to dive in then? Yeah. Dive on in. Hop on top? I, uh, I guess I scurry down the tree, and I jump on top of Fuzzy, fuzzy Butt. Fuzz Butt. Um, Fuzz Butt. <laughs> and I guess before we dive in the water, is it only flashbacks about the heist that we can do? Yes. So I can't do like a flashback from like a time I almost drowned and you could do a flashback where you almost drowned prepping to get on the boat. Well, we were testing our scuba gear in my backyard pool (laughs) and it broke and you almost drowned for this exact scenario. I will go into flashback mode and think about the time when everyone else was trying or I guess the polar bears were trying to teach me how to swim. So they just threw me into the deep end. (laughs) And I started flailing my arms, and now I have fears of water because of it. It's the same way my father taught me how to swim. (laughs) Oh, don't worry, that won't happen this time. You wuss. You get a- you can move a point from bear to criminal if you wish. I do wish to do so. And then I brace myself on Fuzzbutt's back. Alright, uh, you guys all jump in the water. Uh, I guess I should double check. Honey Badger, name and title. Are you also- joining them on this uh, swim and climb. Yep. Okay. You guys enter the water, and... I want to submerge. (laughs) (laughs) It's the only way to swim undetected. 
I'll say that Harry Berry manages to hang on <laughs> out of pure fear, but climbing up the side <laughs> of the boat is going to require a bear check. I'm going to sink my claws and teeth into Fuzzbutt's back <laughs> in teeth. order to keep me on. Okay. Five. Is that a failure? On my bear check. It is. Okay. That's how I move one back from bear to criminal. Yes. So low rolls are good things here? Yes, you want to be under your stat. Okay, my bear stat is a two. And I just rolled a one. That's good. That's a success. So, so nothing moves. Nothing moves, and you are successfully infiltrating the boat. Harry Barry, if you succeed on your bear check, I will let Fuzzbutt make it onto the boat. So since we swam over there, and I'm supposedly bad at swimming, does it like does that count for anything? Um, you're making lots of splashing noises. No, oh, okay. I succeeded. All right, so Fuzzbutt, you still failed yours, so you moved your <laughs> stats, but. Fuzzbutt and Harry Barry are on the boat. And how about you, Honey Badger, name and title? Um, I would also like to go on the boat. Give us that D6. Five. So that is higher than your bear check, correct? Your bear stat is still at three? Yep. Okay, so you're going to move one of your criminal points into your bear points. So you're now four bear and two criminal. Wow. You manage to get on the boat, but you're clawing up the boat as you go. Like, you're actually, like, digging digging furrows in the boat. Are you guys going up the back, or are you just going straight up the side? Which one was closer? The side would be closer. I think it's probably the side, then. All right, you go up the side, and you flop over the railing onto the lower deck, and you see a door to your left and a stairway to your right. The stairway goes up presumably to the upper deck where Humphrey is, and the door to your left goes into the boat. Can we look? Is there like a window on the door we can look through it? It is frosted. I want to go through the door quietly. I want to like, you know, creak it open to see if there's anybody in there or if I can like hear anybody in there. Give me a criminal. I rolled a six. (laughs) That's a failure. So I put a point into the criminal slot? Yes. Okay. Or, or no, 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 hold on. When you fail, uh, move one point from criminal to bear. When I fail a criminal check? Yeah, because you failed at being a criminal and you were more bear-like than criminal-like in that instance. Yeah, actually, I think I was reading this wrong, and whenever the plan fails and you run into difficulty, move one point from criminal to bear. Oh, in both instances. Yeah, so we'll do that from now on. Any failures whatsoever go from criminal to bear. So it's inviting. The game wants you to go on bear rampages. Well, or you want to try and find, uh, or you want to keep going into flashbacks about how you were planning (laughs) this heist. So how do you get points into the criminal besides those flashbacks? By succeeding? Because when you succeed, you don't do anything. When you fail in the bear category, then you would still move a point into the bear category? Yeah. So essentially- So there's no way to gain our criminal points back, except for just always having flashbacks? Yeah. Essentially, the game wants you to try to have as many flashbacks as possible so that you can kind of make up the story a little bit as you go and make it more interesting, it seems. That also means you essentially can never lose, because if you just keep feeding into the bear stats by, like, failing, though, and you're at five, and you just be like, okay, I have, like, three flashbacks. And you, you, you know what I mean? Like, that way, like, that end goal for, like, either end of the spectrum, like, the full points, that can't be met. Unless you choose to have it met. And you well, can, unless you decide that, oh, you know, I'm or, good. If you say, oh, I'm at five, I'm good. And then you accidentally fail even at a bear check. Yeah, I guess. And then you can never go full criminal unless you just say, hey, I just want to have five flashbacks right now. Well, you all, it's also up to the uh, game master to decide whether or not those flashbacks are worthwhile. Okay, I mean, as long as our system seems to make sense, I'll go along with it. It just seems... Like, I'm trying to leave it as open as possible for you guys, and you just have an end goal. I gotcha. We just sit there, our eyes roll back in our heads, and we just have five flashbacks in a row. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So, you tried to open the door, and your bear paws can't grab the handle. Makes sense. So, you're sitting there trying to paw open the door... And you realize that it's 
electronically locked. Hmm. Well, alternatively, I just kind of mumble to myself, Honey Badger don't care, and I would like to just walk straight up to the fat kid, like right along the side of the boat, not trying to hide myself or anything. I'm just going to kind of slowly walk along the edge of the boat. Okay. And PB, what were you... Oh, I was going to say, since I noticed it's an electronic lock, I didn't know... The, um, I know uh, other Brad here is like the brain. I don't know if he could do something, so I'll have him check it out. Pull out my acid honey and melt the lock <laughs> off of my weapons belt. Yeah, Honey Badger, name and title. Do you have any ideas on how to tackle the electronic locks? I go up to the door. I look at it and say, yep, it's an electronic lock. That's that's all I got. I'm a bear. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. <laughs> Harry Barry, uh, you are walking up the stairs and you get up on deck and you see these men that are just coming up from the hold all with these giant uh, Winnie the Pooh honey jars and Humphrey is grabbing another one from his retainer and he notices you and says what are you doing standing around we're supposed to be unloading the honey I perk up I just put my nose up in the air my snout if you will and I just sniff around a little bit and I just keep walking up to him and start sniffing his fat feet (laughs) he says what are you doing I give him a look a look that he recognizes as that I'm hungry and would like something sweet like honey you know you don't get fed until the games begin i give him like a puppy dog face but in bear version to see if he'll just out of the kindness of his heart sneak me just a little bit before the games begin okay sure the cuddliness of being a bear i will go ahead and let you roll a bear check it's the puppy bear face i succeed i rolled a one excellent he says oh fine here you can have some of this honey and he hand and he like digs his hand into the pot and then like shoves it at your face and just holds his hand out like as if he was wearing a bunch of rings and he wanted you to kiss his rings but instead his hands are just dripping with honey <laughs> oh i start licking him all over his hands like my tongue in between his fingers and everything i want to let out a bear growl that pb can understand as meaning uh or no harry berry Harry Berry can understand is meaning lead him back here. Humphrey is a little ticklish, and as you're licking his hand, goes, <laughs> "Oh yes, yeah, oh that's that's good stuff. You know what? You're not so bad. You know what? I'm going to show you something that I'm not supposed to show you. How would you like to see the manuka extract? I do as any bear would do, and and just look at him, kind of perk up, and just. Give them a little... How far away are they? Um, they are 50 feet away from you. Not um, out of your shot? Not out of your shot. Okay. So you can hear this. Oh, I can? Yes. Okay, yeah, so when I hear that Manuka honey thing, my ears are going to kind of perk up, and I'm going to be trying to pay attention to them. Sure enough, Humphrey says, All right, follow me. And he leads you back down the staircase that you just came down. And uh, PB... Fuzzbutt and Honey Badger name and title, you guys can hear that Humphrey is coming back your way. We should hide. Where can we hide? Where can we hide? Well, I would quickly figure it out because in my mind, you got 15 seconds. Okay, so what I'm going to do... Hang off the side of the boat. Yep. We're going to do a backflip <laughs> and then just jump over and just grab onto the edge of the boat. Use my bear claws to dig in a little bit down. I'm just going to wait there. You just hear the screeching of like a chalkboard as you just <laughs> scratch the aluminum the whole way down and then splash into the water. <laughs> it's a wooden the- ship. Whoa! What about you, Honey Badger, name and title? Wait, what? What did Matt, what just happened to Matt? So Matt, or Fuzzbutt and PB, they both just swung off over the edge and are hanging off the side of the boat. That's where they're hiding. Hmm. You should hide inside the abnormally large honey pot directly next to the door. Sure, there is a honey pot next to the door that has ferns in it instead of honey. Yeah, I'll do that. All right, all three of you that are hiding, give me a criminal check. I passed with a three. 
I pass with a one. Four. So is that a... That's a failure? I have four in my criminal. Oh, perfect. Then, yes, you succeed. You're all hiding, and uh, Harry Berry and Humphrey come down the stairs, and Humphrey goes, No, I don't normally tell people about this, but the big prize for the honey games is the Manuka extract, and I'm going to show you exactly where it is, but it's perfectly safe, no worries. I'm only going to show it to you. It's behind these electronically locked doors, and I've got security guards inside. I give him like, I give him like a bare look and kind of noise, like I'm a little bit, I'm a little worried because he made it seem like the way he said it's perfectly safe, all this other kind of stuff. I just, I'm, a, I'm a little uneasy about that, but I give him that look, like I trust him. Well, don't worry, <laughs> we've done this. Well. We've never done it before, but my father assures me that it's fine. And he walks up to the door and he punches in the key code. And you see that it is 777777. <laughs> All right. I pay attention to that. How many, wait, how many sevens was that? Seven. Oh, real clever. This tricky bastard. All right. And the door clicks open and he says, come along. What is your name? Ah. You're going to have to speak up. I didn't ah. quite hear that. Harry Barry. Okay. That's a great name. I really like your uh, your trilby. It's very fashionable. I kind of just, I kind of like tilt my hat forward a little bit <laughs> as a way of saying thank you. All right. He says, come on in. I, I come on in. I'm going to look at Fuzzbutt real quick and <laughs> very quietly in the bear language that only bears can understand, I will try to communicate to see, should we just like snatch him overboard now and go get said briefcase that is inside that room? Yeah, can we like slip in the door behind him as he's going through? Um, or like at least get back up behind him? Yeah, I'll let you do a bear check. Well, your choice. You can do a bear check or a criminal check. Sneaking All or right, climbing. Well, as a bear... When I see some nice, plump, undefended young, <laughs> I'm going to eat them. You're going to try and eat him? I'm going to eat him. Okay, bear check. He's going straight bear. Straight bear. Are you just bursting in the door behind him? You're just going to maul this dude? Just, and just <laughs> bite him in the back of the head. A two, which is a pass. <laughs> All right, you climb over the top, and you go to... You start galumphing in after him to bite him in the back of the head. Now, is there anything I can do to prevent that? Like, do I have an opportunity to stop that from happening? Sure. All right. I would just like to simply close the door behind us before he can jump off. All right. Uh, that'd be a criminal check. That's a fail. <laughs> <laughs> you do not get to the door before uh, Fuzzbutt comes galumphing in. And he knocks the door aside. I want to go, which translates roughly to, your ass is mine. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, um, PB and uh, Honey Badger, name and title? I'm going to keep watch. All right. Not hanging off the side of the boat while keeping watch, though. I'm going to kind of get up onto the boat area and keep watch outside the door. Okay. And what about you, Honey Badger, name and title? Oh, pop my head out of the pot I'm hiding in, and also watch. Is your head just covered in honey, because there's honey on the side? <laughs> no, it was a fern. Oh. So he's got a little fern with uh, with some mulch just sitting on top of his head. Cute little thing. Fuzzbutt, you <laughs> launch yourself at the back of Humphrey, <laughs> and, sure, and sure enough, you bite the back of his head, but just a nibble. Just a nibble. Just a nibble. No, I want to just straight savage him, straight to the ground, just horrible graphic, just the worst thing that could ever happen to someone. Like in The Revenant, when Leo yes. just gets mauled for a long time. Except it's from the back of his head, so he has no chance to fight back. Okay, um, <laughs> you knock him down and try to maul him, but there are armed guards inside the room. And, okay, I'm all them too. And they're all, all standing around a big green safe with the 
old-fashioned gold shift wheel turning mechanism, and they all have giant stun guns. And they go, ah, it's a bear! I have a giant-ass polar bear. I just slap the shit out of them. <laughs> I need to bear check. <laughs> Six. So that's a failure, right? Yep, which means my bear stat goes up on it. Yes. So the armed guards start beating you <laughs> with the uh, bear stunners, and they go, it's a big one! We can get him! Look, we got him off Humphrey! And Humphrey says, Harry Barry, save me! Uh, this is this is tough because I feel like so far I've been playing too, like cunning for a honey badger who doesn't give a damn about anything by trying to play too strategically. So realistically, I should not have I should not give a shit in this situation. Well you are unhinged, so you do have you could be playing both sides. But your skill is also carnage. Uh, shit. All right. Um, yeah, maybe maybe your end goal was, <laughs> ooh, I'm going to be nice and cunning so that in the end I can just carnage everything. All right, all right, all right. I tell, in strictly bear language to Fuzzbutt, that, like, pretty much tell my plan, what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Defend this man right here, this fat kid. You remove yourself so I look like said hero, so he trusts me more, so he shows me combination to get in here, and then I will come open up the door from the inside for all you guys to come in and we will maul them all together. Is this conversation happening like mid Fuzzbutt's getting stunned by a gun? I guess yes, he's, right he's getting stunned, yes. so I just, and when the fat kid says, save me or whatever, I just start. I, I try to look all tough and big, and I stand up on my two little legs, and I just start growling and roaring and hissing and all this other kind of bear stuff. All right. All right, I want to pretend to fight Harry Barry for a bit. Maybe smack him for real just once. And then... I bite him in the kneecap. I go to try to tear out his ACL. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that feels like... I, I dig it out, like claw it out of him, and I'm just scratching at his legs to really make it look brutal, to really try to sell it <laughs> right now. Then I'm going to go and limp off. The armed guards slam the door closed behind Fuzzbutt, and Humphrey goes, Harry Barry, thank you. Ah. <laughs> yes, you couldn't have said it better myself. I'm going to show you the Manuka extract. Ah, uh, and he crawl. He kind of limps over to the combinate to the big green safe, and he spins it three times to the right, then two times to the left, and then he pauses and he leans against the combination and starts huffing and puffing. And he goes, "This is a very big wheel," <laughs> and then he spins it five more times to the right, and you hear a click. Then he pulls the golden handle. And he opens it up, and inside you see a briefcase made of red leather that's all stitched up and perfectly aligned so that all the perfect Manuka scent and uh, flavor is preserved. And he pulls it out and goes, nobody knows this. At that point in time, you hear a knock on the door, because when the guards close the door, I notice that as the lookout. And Humphrey swings the briefcase behind his back and goes who is that i would also like to get in the safe or the room that humphrey went in as well and when the knock comes i would like to close the door of the safe putting us both inside to keep the extract safe no when i say like a, a big green safe in the middle of the room i mean like imagine a gun safe oh i picture it like a walk-in vault kind of safe and it was just sitting in in that it's just like on a pedestal and like yeah that's that's how i pictured <laughs> it so okay sure uh he opened up a big green safe door in the back wall and you guys are now inside the safe all right i guess before i do anything else you can play out what happens after he knocks okay the guards buzz up their their stun guns and you just hear from the other side of the door here i ready a snowball I want to be standing next to the door with one paw raised, like, on the side of the door so they can't see me, just ready to go. Or no, I'm going to go hide it behind the plant with the honey badger and say if they come out here, we have to throw them off the side of the boat. 
Um, and the door creaks open, and one guy s- sticks his head out and eats paw. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a bear check. God damn it. Five. Is that a failure? Yeah. <laughs> Was he going to eat Paul from like inside the room? Is that what you're going He's sticking for? his head like out of the room. Yeah, aren't you in the room? No, I like left. So I'm staying outside with you guys. Oh. Do I notice if on this briefcase at all, if there is like a combination or anything to open up the briefcase next? No, there's no combination on the briefcase. It's just two latches. But the guards slam the door closed and again and go, It's that god or sorry, it's the goddamn polar bear. He's still <laughs> out there. Don't open that door. Damn it. And Humphrey says, Well, we're safe in here. Are you ready to see the Manuka extract? Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of making bear sounds. I don't even know how to correctly do them, but so I'll just keep mumbling shit. Just go for your Chewbacca <laughs> sound. That was a pretty good bear, though. He goes, all right, here we go. <laughs> and he clicks open the latches and opens the briefcase. And there's nothing in there. It's all a fake. I just wanted people to pay money for the tickets. And Fucking then I'm going to go off him. on my own. Kill him. All Is right. he lying? All right. I get Roll an insight check to see if he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I use my D8 and roll and see if... I, I, I think... If there's another spot where they're actually hiding it. Um, you could do a criminal check. Oh, yes, that's what I want to do. That's a failure, and I go into full bear rage mode. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. Uh, that right. was kind of my plan. <laughs> I was waiting to set it up so I can bear rage and kill everyone. Honey Badger don't give a fuck, and, uh... <laughs> You just hear the worst sounds of carnage happening inside the room, those of you that are out on the deck. I immediately nice. consume my body weight's worth of honey and go into my own bear rage. I pop a bear boner. So yeah, you guys successfully <laughs> or unsuccessfully, I don't know, you got onto the boat and you got your honey, so <laughs> I guess that's a successful day for some bears. You murdered a child, so... Good. <laughs> he, did. He, was honest. A, he was a fat, spoiled trust fund kid. Who is going to trick all those people and take their money? <laughs> I'll be honest, my whole plan was to get the honey, eat it all myself, and then tell you guys that there was never any honey in the first place, so that I would have been the real criminal here. But I guess that <laughs> only partially happened. So So what were like your expectations for like this open world? Like what kind of stuff were like usually comes out of this? I had no expectations whatsoever. I didn't even know that Humphrey... I didn't even know Humphrey existed. I didn't know there was going to be a boat. I was just waiting for you guys to say something that you were going to do, and then I would build the world around it. The plan was always to murder Humphrey. Yeah, that was probably always going to happen. <laughs> Flashback when you guys were smoking cigarettes and... Thinking about how great Humphrey would taste. <laughs> we really only had to do, like, two flashbacks. <laughs> It's back when we were at the Gentleman's Club and uh, you looked all sad because you didn't think it was going to work. Very much like how your bike chain was not working and you got sad. I said, hey, we still got this all together and got our plan figured out. So if you back can when we were put all this just genius sitting in plan a, together, then you back can Back when we were away. all just sitting in a sauna together, towels around us, no pants on, and just sweating it out as real your, men do. Your bear, bear asses. Just letting our bear yeah. asses hang out. Get all sweaty. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, if if this was a longer format, I might have created a more <laughs> uh, complicated world for you to navigate. But, you know, just wanted to have some fun with you guys, do a one-shot where you get to be goddamn bears. <laughs> I feel like this is something that Eric would have really got into if he was able to be here for this one. <laughs> he pr- <laughs> probably would have, honestly. Although, I think he would have gone straight bear route. <laughs> I'm a goddamn bear. I maul that guy. I'm all that guy. I'm all that guy, too. <laughs> That's what I was going to do from the start. Like, every single person, I'm, I was just going to start mauling. I did it with the first guy, but then uh, didn't, didn't want to go, go that route. Well, you also are unhinged, so who knows what the hell you're going to do. Well, I just murdered a fat boy and all the guards, I imagine, so... That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, had a little bit of fun. Uh, until next time, there's, you know, we'll be back with some more Death Saving Bros main story arc content or um, main campaigning content. Until then, you can follow us on Twitter at Death Saving Bros. You can follow me personally at HB Camper. You can follow me at Benfro15. You can follow me at Death Saving Bros. I mean, um, I'm a underscore B underscore rad. Uh, you can follow Eric at ES Nemeth. And you can follow me at B underscore R I C H A 918. And you can follow me on Old School RuneScape as Fat F A T T Smith. And if you can't smell S- Smith, you're an idiot. You cannot smell Smith, I promise you. Spell Smith. Hey, we're bears. We smell everything. What does Smith smell like? Smell Spith. Metal and pure <laughs> ecstasy. Mm. Until next time, wherever you may be, in your car, in your home, keep saving those death throws, keep saving those bear throws, and we'll see you on the next one. Smells like Mama June after hot yoga. (sighs) Some of the sounds and background music in this production are copyright material. The songs Almost New, Club Seamus, Deadly Roulette, Flying Kerfuffle, Funnin' and Sunnin', Heavy Interlude, Heroic Age, Porch Blues, Surf Shimmy, and Teddy Bear Waltz are by Kevin McLeod and Incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution License 3.0. The Death Saving Bros theme song is an abridged version of the song Run by Kai Angle and sourced from the Free Music Archive. This track is used with permission under Creative Commons Attribution License 4.0. You can read the full license at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 4.0 slash legal code.